we had the quite the drama yesterday with the the family cat um he apparently went into a diabetic coma i wasn't aware that that could happen to cats he is on insulin because he's a little old diabetic cat but we rushed him to the vet and um i signed all the papers um to to euthanize him because he wasn't getting better and he had really low blood sugar and his and his temperature was 10 units too low and they had been feeding him like honey water and rubbing it on his gums and things like that to see if they could revive him and uh the vet comes in to <laughs> to shave his little you know arm to put the put the the, the chemicals in and uh my my cat sits up and takes a swipe at him and the vet's like oh hey <laughs> <laughs> I think he's gonna be okay so after like crying my eyes out and agonizing about what the right decision to do you know finally signing the papers after talking with the vet and him saying yeah you know I've never seen a cat with blood sugar this low come back from it and you know he's in really rough shape which I believe is vet code for it's okay to do it after I you know, signed everything and made arrangements to have him cremated and picked out the box and all that stuff. He jumps off the table and <laughs> goes into his crate. Okay, he didn't jump off the table, but <clears throat> he wanted to jump off the table, so I lifted him down and he walked over into his crate. And then they put some warm blankets on him and stuff. And by the time we came home, he like saunters out of his crate and goes to eat some dinner. And he was like, hey, what are you looking at? <laughs> so, was a traumatic day yesterday. Um, and here's the crazy part. I was about to eat lunch when all this happened. And I had inadvertently um, not really eaten breakfast except for some, uh, like a half a handful of nuts, which I'm sure is actually plenty of calories. So, you know, as far as the food-wise goes, I had half and half in my coffee and some nuts um, because I was in a lot of meetings. Um, so I was hungry and I was about to eat lunch and didn't end up eating lunch because I was rushing my <clears throat> diabetic cat, aged diabetic cat to the hospital or the pet hospital that is. Um, so, and then you know how after something bad happens when you're all kind of jittery, like your post-traumatic shock stuff, I was kind of in that state and so I I couldn't settle down to really eating anything so I had like I don't know like a half a slice of pizza or something um and I was just still all upset I guess leftover upset so what I decided to do because I couldn't concentrate on anything and I still felt really wired from what had happened and having to make that difficult decision because this guy he's been with us for 16 17 years and he is um, a member of this family so I went downstairs and we're remodeling our bathroom in the basement and I busted up tile <laughs> for like 45 minutes to an hour I got sweaty it was not difficult work I had to have you know eye gear um, hearing protection, everything like that. And I used a <laughs> three pound hammer or maul and just bashed the tile um, apart instead of trying to use any kind of finesse. And, and uh, I have the start of blisters on both hands, but it was cathartic and I slept really well last night. So I guess that coping tool worked well. And of course the number on the scale was good because I didn't really eat enough yesterday. I was starving this morning when I woke up, so I made sure to have something um, that had lots of protein in it and could kind of start me off well for today. So, you know, I think that's how you handle life in a way that doesn't involve eating a cupcake to get through it. So I bashed tile last night. So that's my, <laughs> that's my coping tool for today is when you're really stressed out, do something that feels like it's a lasting accomplishment or exercise and sweat and do something that doesn't involve your brain. So that's what I, that's what I have to tell you today. Bye.